Hey, what's going on, Badger fans? Um, we weren't even planning on doing a show today, but when a guy like Dylan Jones commits, you jump on the show, you go ahead and do it. We got cannons to fire off. We're going to talk about it. Is this, is this the new norm for Luke Fickle and Badger recruiting? Let's go. Let's talk about it. Sound the cannons on Wisconsin, and let's get into this show. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Badgers, your team every single day, sometimes a couple times a day. Uh, I am your host, Ryan Herrings, as always. Really do appreciate everybody tuning in, everybody giving us a small part of your day. That's incredible and humbling. Thank you so much. Uh, and let's get Cannon on. Let's get Justin on. Uh, we have cannons to fire. We have stuff to talk about. I think everybody obviously knows if you're watching this show, but uh, Dylan Jones commits another back into the class. Let's fire off the cannons and let's talk about it. Fire the recruiting cannons. Another one is headed to Madison on Wisconsin. And look at that. I didn't even loop it this time. I'm uh, so <laughs> proud of you. You're growing up right before our eyes. Yes. <laughs> Guys, so Dylan Jones, um, four-star running back out of Good Counsel High School in Maryland. 5'11", 190 pounds, great offer list. Uh, at some point, Auburn, Florida State, Notre Dame, Michigan, Penn State, and others, Arkansas. Um, huge get, third running back in the class. Where are we at here with Dylan Jones? Um, I really like him. I think he's a nice contrast to the skill set that Dupree has. Dupree's a little bit more of the flash. And the game for Jones, if you watch him run, he's a little more subtle. He's a, he's a he's a pretty good explosive back. He's got a lot of home run hits on his on his film. I don't think he's got a he's got top top end speed, but he's got great speed for a back. He accelerates well. He's a guy who's much more subtle in his movements and has really good vision for for cutting. Um, whereas Dupree is a guy who is is basically the guy that's just gonna make people left holding air. I think that Jones is a little bit more willing to run to contact and go through people. Um, not that both both of them run very hard for their size. Jones is not a huge back, but I think he's got a good frame to add weight in college, and I think he will. I honestly think both of them will end up around 210 by the time all is said and done. But this is as good as it gets. Like Wisconsin getting two composite four-star backs in a class is a huge, huge statement by by Fickle and your own. And Atuka is a nice back too. So you have three guys in a room that was – Honestly, it was one of my scared rooms I was most scared for from a depth standpoint. Mm -hmm. Three guys that are legitimate running back recruits coming in. And that's not to, to throw shade on the guys that we have in that room. But they didn't come in as running backs. They came in as – one came in as a fullback, and the other one came in as a guy who is kind of an athlete. So to see guys that legitimately were – these are guys that are highly ranked at the running back position to bring those guys in – I feel really good about it that we're getting guys that a lot of other teams looked at and saw the skill set and said, we want these guys. I think um, Jones is the perfect complimentary back to Dupree. I think Jones is, Jones is your home run hitter. I think he has more speed than Dupree. I think he's, you know, more breakaway. And he's a super patient runner. He finds the hole, goes through it. I think he has a perfect frame, like Justin said. Mm. He'll be able, I think he'll get around 200 to 210 around that range. Um and then you pair them both with Atuka, who is going to be your goal line back, a little battering ram. I think this is – we got a perfect class of running backs. You know, the, the fun thing when you watch high school film, uh, specifically with Jones, is what is he running out of? Right? What sets is he running mm -hmm. out of? He is literally running out of a Phil Longo type of high school offense. Yep. And I think it translates so well. Like, he's very north-south. Justin, you hit on some of that. He's not trying to bounce it. North-south, very subtle, foot in the ground, get get vertical. And then he can outrun some angles. Um, yeah. Playing at a really good high school, by the way, Frank Tamakali. That Tam Tam you guys remember the safety? That was good counsel. Oh, there. man, yes. That was the same high school. Because the name sounded familiar. I'm like, ah, I know we got somebody out of there. Frank Tamakali, four-star safety, by the way. A lot of good that did us. Um, <laughs> did he ever play? <laughs> I mean, I think he did, but it turns out that that was not one of the four yeah. stars that yeah. elevated <laughs> the program. He was not a hit. <laughs> But no, this is this is a huge gift for the Badgers to, for all the reasons you guys talked about. But I want to zoom out a little bit. So Justin, I thought you did a great job tactically. Um, Cannon, I thought you did a great job just breaking down the frame and the differences between the running backs. But from a big picture standpoint, this just reiterates that this staff can sell, right? Because mm -hmm. they just sold two composite four-star running backs on coming in together with another running back and sharing the backfield in 
nominally a pass heavy offense. Yeah. Like this stack can sell. Oh yeah, they can for um, sure. And I think that, well, I mean, Phil Longo, man, good Lord. That guy knows how to sell offense. Mm-hmm. Like sitting in a room with him, listening to him talk, he just seems like, doesn't he seem like he's a good old boy? They sit there and be like, oh, we're going to set the world afire. We're going <laughs> to do this up. We'll get you guys out there. NFL team's going to be begging to bring you in. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, not, it's not hard for, for Longo to sell. I mean, he's put two running backs in the NFL. on the, oh, They were on the same team, and they're <laughs> very good running backs in the NFL currently. So he has a great selling point just right there. He's got multiple quarterbacks, too. I mean, if you look back across the list of guys that he's dealt with going back to Ole Miss even, those guys at least got a look for the NFL. Yeah. And some of them weren't super highly regarded dating back to that. So um, he, he's a dude. Um, I I really – I think that – listen, I, I don't think we're going to have two full composite fours star back classes like this on a regular basis. But it's nice to know that the group is capable of doing it if they need to. Like, we're, look at a couple of years ago, Wisconsin signed a three-back class. Yeah. Let's, let's take a guess at the highest-ranked composite guy out of that group. I bet you was no more than an 87. Was that the Antoine Roberts, the Loyal team. Crawford yep. group? Right. Jalen, was Jalen Berger the third? Because he was a four-star guy. Was he the Berger, third? Berger wasn't the third. Um, I can't uh, remember who the third was. I don't think any of those guys are here anymore. They're, that, I don't think any of them are. No. That's also true. No, it's – it's just interesting too. Um, there was a comment we we there was a comment from the other the show the other day that talked about you know are we sure Fickle is elevating recruiting over Chris and one of the things I said well he's getting it we just eight four so much more spread out yeah like it but the other thing I said is because I was thinking about this more and I want you guys to take on this I know Justin you have to jump off and if you're in the comments let me know because people will always go back to well look at what Chris did he had the what the 16th rated class in the 21st. But he also had like the 38th, the 40th. Like it right. wasn't consistently there, right? And, and it wasn't weapons. Yeah. Like Chris, for for this running back tradition that Wisconsin had, how many – he was here seven years. We had – out of that group, I think Clement. And Berger. You had Berger. Berger. Were those the only two four-stars? I mean, Taylor was effectively a four-star. He was at least on one service. But I think he was only like a composite like 87 or 88. It was just – Somebody dropped the ball on that one. And it, it was Berger and Clement. Those are the only he, two. At least you can you can point to why he wasn't. It was simply because of the fact that you're looking at it and Taylor was playing really suspect competition where he was, but the skill set translated. They just weren't sure how quick he would hit in college because he would have a significant step up step up in competition. He definitely hit. He definitely yeah, hit. Yeah. No kidding. That was, that was a hit for sure. Not an in-state player either. Yeah. Um, you know, but similar to what we've talked about, you know, it doesn't have to be in state if you're getting elite talent. I think the question always comes down to is how much elite talent can you get year after year that isn't in state? And maybe this, we're going to talk about this some of the next section. I know Justin, you're not going to be here, but maybe this is just the new normal. Maybe the I think, new normal I think it is. is mining out of state talent. I, I think I have no doubt in my mind that this staff can come in and get seven or eight, four stars, a class. My question is, is can they get, 10, 12, four stars a class, which is difference making for the Wisconsin program. If you get those four guys in depth added into your program, like suddenly now the second group of guys starts pushing that first group. And now you have depth across the board that gives you that ability to withstand injuries or when guys get tired, being able to shift somebody in of similar ability level. And that changes everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Oh, listen, we're going to, we're going to get into that next, Justin. Do you, do you need to go? I think you Yeah, I got to go, guys. Oh, lazy. <laughs> Terrible. Um, Justin's going to drop off. We're going to come back. I'll me. chop this up sometime with Ryan again. Yep, with myself and Cannon. We're going to take all your comments. We'll get into, is this the new normal? And continue after that, after this break uh, from our friends of the show. Justin, any last words before you go? Listen, you keep an eye out, people. Me? Right now, I think that this one is going to lock in a composite four, or a tw- top 25 class for Wisconsin. I think they have at least three spots left that we're looking at probably two, three. So there's a good chance that they could, they could be like a number 23, number 22 type class. If they get a couple of real studs in the last couple of guys here. So something to take into account, that's a really good first class for a coach that's coming in on a short, short cycle. So something, something to think about people. Fickle one. I mentioned this to Ryan um, in the Discord, but if this is Fickle 1.0, imagine what Fickle 2.0 is going to look like. Oh, yeah. When they get an it's, entire cycle to work on, guys, yeah. oh, yeah, it's going to be different. We're going to be building. 
Yeah. Uh, we got to take a quick break for our friends of the show. Say goodbye to Justin. We'll get back with Cannon as well. Uh, but first, our friends of the show over at eBay Motors. eBay Motors is the number one place I go to to buy all of my car parts. Uh, for a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is the perfect fit. And it's the same when it comes to your vehicle. They have to be perfect fits, exactly what you need. Every part needs to fit just right. The next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can make sure every part fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage. Look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win with the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. eBay Motors, ebaymotors.com. You will not regret it. Uh, I do want to take a quick second to say thank you to everybody who's tuning into the show. I um, really do appreciate all the comments. Appreciate Cannon coming in. Uh, we're going to bring him back over here. Uh, let's see. We lost Justin. Let's see if I can make this look a little better. Okay. Yeah, we'll roll with it. Yeah, we're all with it. <clears throat> I wasn't anticipating losing Justin. Um, I want to talk about, is this the new normal? And I mean a couple ways with this canon. Is this going out of state, the new normal? And also, is stacking talent the new normal? When Phil Longo and Luke Fickle came in, they brought in this group of quarterbacks, and we said, well, geez, somebody's going to transfer. That's, that's almost too much there. They did the same with receiver, cornerback, running back. Like, it, are these guys just going to transfer? Is this just the new normal now? I, I think that they're trying to get the best guys they can. And if they bring in a bunch of people, they know that the people that can't compete will transfer out or they will get out. And as far as going into other states, I, I think that is. I, I don't think – I mean, if they have a top-rated guy in, in the state, of course they're going to try to go after him. But, I mean, they've gone out and got in eight four-star composites out of different states. Not only their linemen, but their skill positions too. Running back corner like that that is, it doesn't normally happen here at wisconsin that when's the last time we've had multiple four-star skill positions in a class it, it's been a while mm. and on top of that i think with fickle being from chicago and illinois and the, what they, they've really been going hard in pennsylvania too i think that they're really targeting those two places especially with how deep those states are in terms of talent um that a lot of the top guys in those states are going to go to the, you know, the Penn States or the Ohio States. But deeper down that you're going to get some good players that are really high rated players, but they might not go to those big colleges due to the depth that they have in those positions. So I think this is a new norm and I'm totally fine with it. Yeah, I, I, I want to start with the competition thing because we had a comment in here already about is this going to lead to decommitments from our current guys? And I don't want to be I want to start by saying I think. I don't want to be crass with it, but I almost want to just kind of say, who cares a little bit? Like, and I mean that in a way of more talent coming in is going to make competition harder, right? It's going to raise the bar and, and the cream will generally rise to the top. And that's how the big time you can't, I, let me put it another way. You can't have it both ways, right? You want a big time program. This is what big time programs do. They stack talent. The, the, the cream rises to the top and the others transfer out. It's not a knock on anybody. That's just how the elite programs run their 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 roster. Yep, that's 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 the truth. You're not going to build a top program because you, as a fan base or you, as a coaching staff, just love a player so much that he may not be better than somebody, but you don't want to get rid of him. That that kind of logic doesn't build top programs. That's not what Alabama went by. That's not what Ohio State went by. So you got to bring the best you can get and. You, if people transfer out, so be it. Uh, Ryan e Eidler says uh, Wisconsin is a national brand. It is what it is. I, I keep trying. I think I keep mispronouncing your name, bro. Let me know. I, if it is, it's not on purpose, I promise. Um, but, yeah, Wisconsin is a national brand. And, by the way, if, you go, if you've been an everyday or you've been with us for a while, and I'm scrolling up slowly, I want to get into more of your comments, you'll know that when – Paul Chris was fired. There was a clamoring for Jim Leonard. And I, I said, listen, I get plenty wrong. This is not me trying to, but I said, listen, wait, Wisconsin is a big boy. Like, let's see who they can get. And now Philco came in and now he's validating that. Like he can sell this brand. I'll eat my words here. Cause I was one of those people that I wanted Leonard. I wanted Leonard bad. And when they hired Fickle, I was bashing it. I hated it. I wanted Leonard. And then the more it's, I sat on it, the more I thought about it, I was like, okay. And I was just crossing my fingers like, Leonard, come back as B coordinator. Uh, he uses his clothes. And, but anyway, I, now I'm happy. I mean, do I think Leonard would have been able to do what Fickle's doing? Probably not. Because 
I think if Leonard is the head coach, I don't think Longo comes. I don't think he brings in Longo. Um, without Longo, I don't think we get uh, Mabry. I, I don't think we get him. I don't think we get a lot of these quarterbacks or skill positions that we got. So I'm actually so excited that we got Fickle. I am so happy, and I think we're in a great position to do great things. So going back, if everyone remembers, not to go off too, too much of a tangent here, but uh, Petroikis tweeted that Leonard was coming back at one point. I had a source that said the same thing. Um, somebody in, like, he was coming back. Like, it was, and then what I was told is things moved too quickly, and I tried to get details on that in terms of, like, what what does that mean? Were, were you know, for was it things were moving too quickly for Leonard or for the, the staff coming in? And I, I was told, no, no, we can't go that far into this for, with you. But he was. He was coming back at one he point. He was coming back at, at D.C.? He was, and oh I had a squad. I, I, let me preface this. I had a source that said he, he was. He texted the source that texted me, and this is a guy that would know. Uh, said, "Yep, he's coming back." And I, and I put it in the Discord at that point, but I didn't feel quite confident enough to like put it on Twitter. I was just like, "I'll, I'll put it in the Discord." Uh, but Troik has tweeted about that same time, so I kind of wonder if we had the same source on this. But then I it apparently all I got was a vague term and said it it, it moved too fast. So I take wonder, that for what it's worth. But it was that have been interesting though. I would have been interested to, to see how Leonard and Fickle would have meshed on at, at, at thing because Leonard runs, you know, a traditional uh, three, four, you know, he mm-hmm. runs that three, four fickles that three, three, five. So I would have been um, interested to see like who would have taken all, like who would have ran the, 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 cause Leonard's position for corners and fickles for corners is different. Fickle likes those taller rangier corners, you know, Leonard likes those, more ready, like step in and play right now type corners that aren't as tall, maybe a little smaller, but they have the physical tools. Yeah, I almost wonder if that's – and by the way, Ryan, and I've seen this report as well, said if Leonard was the head coach, he was probably going after Sean Lewis, who ended up going to Colorado as the offensive coordinator, uh, and Bobby April's at D.C. That's a good staff. Like that would have been – and there's a multiverse world out there where Jim Leonard takes over and he has Sean Lewis and Bobby April as his coordinators. Where's, and where, where, where was Sean Lewis before Colorado? He was the head coach at – uh the oh my gosh the mac team um i'm blanking someone in the dis someone in the chat will let me know oh, right away yeah um, um former right. badger obviously head coach kent really state. good offensive kent line state? you can say thank you yeah and then dion hired him to be the offensive coordinator so that's probably what was happening right that was actually a solid that was like, that'd be a solid coach and that staff. would be a fun staff but it's not this staff it's not, right it's not. it's not this staff this staff is better uh all right let's get into some comments here because i definitely want to get uh more and more going Jay Broda, uh, Broadbar says April's on fire as a recruit at Stanford. Bobby April is a stud. Yes. Like, if he, if we could have found, if obviously you can't turn down a defensive coordinator at Stanford to be an outside linebacker coach at Wisconsin, but it, if he could have stayed on staff, yeah, he's oh, he's a perfect. monster. He is. Um, let's get more comments here, and again, a bunch of them. Um, we did have a, a Rick Tang said we were trying to think of the the third running back that class. Jackson, Jackson uh, Acker was the third running back. Oh, he's still country. here, though, isn't he? Yep, yeah, he's, he's still the fullback here. now. We couldn't think of that. Um, John Hermanson says it was crazy. We couldn't consistently get four-star running backs when we ran 66% of the time, and now we are. Yeah, that's a great point. But I think, listen, some of it just comes down to, I don't think running running backs aren't dumb, right? Football players aren't dumb. High school kids aren't dumb. They don't want to get run into the ground. They want to play in the pros. And if you – just bash them into the line of scrimmage 40 times a game. They want to play in a system where they can catch the ball, where they can get an open field, they, where they can make big plays. Like th- this is a good system for running backs. That's what people were not. Cause I think this lockdown Badger community is an elevated group outside of me. Probably the rest of y'all are amazing. Uh, but we know Longo wants to run the ball. It's just going to get them in spaces where they have more room to do, to do work. Yeah. Longo. I think Longo almost likes running the ball more than he does passing the ball, but he just, wants to give his running backs bigger spaces to run the ball. He knows it's the percentage wise. It's not good to run the ball in nine man boxes. So he wants to spread them out, you know, loosen them up and then run the ball. And another point to go on your, um, by the way, I love that your mood lighting keeps kicking in and out. I know it's (laughs) annoying me anyway. um, Another point to go on your, um, why we couldn't recruit. I think we also recruited a different type of back when we were, we wanted the bigger, you know, power football type of back that can run the ball 30 times. Because, I mean, if, no offense to Dupree, but if we had Dupree running the ball 30 times, he's more than half going to get injured. He's just not – that's not his game, you know. Mm-hmm. 
So I think with Longo's offense, it opens the doors for more more elusive and more more um, skillful running backs in terms of being able to do everything. Yeah, I think it's I think it's more versatility for sure. Uh, Robert Sorensen says, "Are we getting the real question is Are we getting backwards hat Ryan or no hat Ryan?" You had started with forward hat Ryan, and then it just uh, I got to flip it. I get too excited, man. I get too much energy. Um, Greg Campbell says, I hope this doesn't deter our other two commits. Having three backs is also necessary in case we lose one to injury. I think Dupree's on board. I know Dupree's on board. I, I, you commented on the Jones. He reposted it. I don't think they would have taken Jones if Dupree wasn't okay with it. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree with you, Cannon. Here, here's the thing. First of all, we, we know Jones is on board because he knows what's in the room when he commits, like he's obviously on board. Um, and I don't think there's any way they would have taken the commit from Jones without talking to Dupree. Now I will say this. Kids change their mind, right? There, there, there could be a point later in the year where a school gets into Pre's ear or even Jones's ear and says, "Hey, you know, that is a lot of running backs in that class." I will say, it, it, you could see something down the road, but I, I have no doubt that the coaching staff was very communicative with all these guys, and everyone's on board at this point. I think, I think, I think we should be good, though. I, I don't, I don't know if either of them will decommit. I, I can't say that, but I think the way Longo has pitched, I think they're both going to stay. Can I tell you the hidden sauce with this too? That the thing that I like about it that people don't talk about is people get so worried when player when you load up on position, right? Well, what if player A decommits because you got player B? I always am like, well, player A might decommit anyway. Like he, this is how we're like that dude could decommit anyway, and you never got player B, and now you're in a pickle, right? Like you could fail just at recruiting one guy, so why not get two? And then now you have insurance in case somebody does decommit. What if one of these yeah. dudes gets hurt in high school? I mean, obviously we hope it doesn't, but. Now you've added recruiting insurance. Um, I think that's an underrated point. Yeah, and if player A decommits, you still have player B. That's <laughs> it, right? He's still there. If you don't take yeah. player B and player A decommits, now you don't have any players. You have player C. I'm telling you, there there is something to loading up on a spot and, and creating some self-insurance. Uh, especially I, I recruiting like when players – we see it. I think these guys are all rock solid, but it wouldn't be the first player we thought was rock, rock solid. <clears throat> Rob Booker. <clears throat> <clears throat> you know <laughs> – it wouldn't be the first guy that we thought was rock solid that left. So you you provide insurance by continuing to add talent. Let's see more yeah, comments here. That's it. Rob uh, <laughs> Grant Do oh, Doherty says, any thoughts on Liam Andrews and our shot there? It it doesn't look great. Uh, it doesn't, but I will say this to boost the mood. I from looking at the Discord chat today and looking at some of my Twitter sources, I think we're in a great spot to flip. Dominic Nichols. I, I honestly think we are. I, I don't know if he if he wanted to go to Michigan. I, I think his 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 parents or his his parents' presence pushed him to go there. So I think we could be in a good spot to to flip flip Dominic Nichols from Michigan. That would be a enormous get. All right, we gotta take a very quick pause. Uh, friends of the show, come back with Ken. We'll finish this up, and the rest of it is just all your comments, all the community, because uh, that's really what this is about, y'all. It's about the community that we're building together collaboratively. So, and Cannon's a part of that, which I love. And I, there's a couple other people that have reached out to me that want to get on the show. I can't wait to kind of continue to coordinate that and just give more voices to people because we're smarter when more people talk. And quite frankly, we're probably smarter when I talk less. So the two of those go hand in hand. Uh, Wes Mullenix says, love you, Ryan. Fellow grad from Shell Lake, Wisconsin. Yes, I'm up in Cumberland right now, Wes. Like if you're around, man, let's go grab a beer. I hope that's not too creepy again. I get, sometimes I get a little over... <laughs> Overzealous with Badger fans. I'm like, yes, you're my friend now, right? So, anyway, let's talk more coming up. We got more comments. Uh, Wes, let's chop it up, man. Let's go grab a beer somewhere. But first, a quick break for our friends of the show. Uh, quick sec and a quick second to say thank you to everybody who's tuning in. Uh, everybody in the live, everybody that's going to watch it later on YouTube, everybody's going to listen to it on podcast. You guys are amazing, and it is incredibly humbling to be a tiny part uh, of any of your days. So, let's keep it going. Uh, this is an exciting time for Badger fans, and I'm just right there with you. So let's get Cannon back on, um, and let's just get more comments into this. Let's see. There's Cannon. This one's from Tim. I thought this was a good comment. Longest fast-paced offense means a lot more plays, more rushes, more receptions for everyone. You need the depth. You need more running backs, receivers. I, he just said three backs, but you need more receivers. You need more offensive linemen. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's true. I think that Longo's um, system will make us score a lot of points. I mean, it can also hurt us because – we we I feel like us as a team might have a lot of three announcers here in a minute, and then you get the ball right back to the other team, and our defense goes right back out. 
But we're also going to – I it wouldn't surprise me if we don't if we scored 30 points per game or more than that this year because the way he operates, we're going to score a lot. Well, and, and think of that point too. This is – listen, I, they're not selling nothing, right? Uh, Phil Longo, um, Luke Fickle, they're selling what they've done at North Carolina and Cincinnati respectively. So they are selling track record. They're selling success. But Matt, this is going to get incrementally better if they also do that at Wisconsin, because now they can sell what they've done and they they've done it at Wisconsin. Right. It's not going to listen. There's, there are limits. It doesn't, you're not going to, cause you got eight, four stars this year. You're not going to get 16 next year. And then 24 the year after that. Right. It doesn't, I don't think, <laughs> um, I hope so, but incrementally this thing is going to continue to build momentum. If this year is successful and if this year works, and that's just my opinion, but I, I, I don't see how it wouldn't. Yeah, we're, we're not landing 24 stars next year. We're landing 25 five stars. We're, we're locking them all in. No, no. Let's uh, Maybe we need Rajiv on this show. He he, he may not think so. Uh, Danimal65 says, I wanted Jimmy L as head coach until Fickle came up as a possibility. And then defense coordinator. The only issue I saw is Fick is really charismatic as are his assistants. Jimmy's not. Yeah, there is. I don't think Jimmy from – that's. it's an interesting point. I – I don't think Jimmy is as outwardly charismatic as this staff. And maybe that's culturally, maybe the fit wasn't great. I think Jimmy's show up, do his job, leave. That's what he does. And I mean, he, he does it good. He's one of the top defensive coordinators in the country. That's mm-hmm. why he's getting looks from Alabama to be their D coordinator. That's why he's getting looks from NFL. I mean, but he's not, he's not doing all the social media stuff that Fick's doing. That's not his, his game. He just shows up, does his job and heads home. Yeah, and he's a stud, right? Like this is stud. there's no there's nobody who wants anything but amazing things for Jim Leonard. So, but yeah, oh, yeah. it just may not if be he the gets greatest. that Alabama job. I wish him nothing but the best. I'm gonna post the Discord link. We had a question from uh, Go Fickle yourself, Brian. Could you please send me the Discord link? It's in our chat now. Uh, the Discord's great. Badger talk, good people. No politics, no BS. Um, and I'm gonna drop the. Um, Brian, Brian Smith did a recruiting video for Dylan Johnson. I'm going to drop that in there today. He's just something he recorded. So the Discord also gets kind of sneak previews of guests coming up so you can ask questions. Uh, let's keep going here. Mike says, hot take. Locke starts in 24. Metoyer backs up. Evers transfers, unfortunately. I don't even think that's a hot take. I, I think that's what's going to happen, to be honest. I, I don't. I, I think. Well, well, maybe not the Evers transfer thing. I think Locke is starting. I, I've said that before. I think Locke starts at the beginning, but I think Evers, I think Evers is a ceiling raiser. He makes us better than what Locke will make us. I think his floor is lower, but also Evers has more physical tools than Locke. That's obvious. He's, mm-hmm. he's more athletic. He has a stronger arm. I think he's just taking a little bit more time to get the full offense. And I feel like when he gets that offense and he's he, he gets his tools back in order, I think he'll take over for Locke. I don't think Matt Matur will, ba- will back up Locke. I think Evers will. Um, I think Matur will redshirt, and after his redshirt year, then he'll be an app to take over because I think he, out of all of them, has the best tools, has, has the best skill set. Um, but I don't think Evers will be the third string in transfer. I, I just don't. Okay. No, it's, one of those guys is going to transfer eventually, though, right? Locke or Evers. Because they, they, they can't both play. I think I think next year, Locke will definitely start at the beginning, but I think Evers will beat him out eventually. Okay. But also, with Longo's offense, Evers will have packages just for himself because he's more of an athletic quarterback. I mean, we saw that in the spring game, too. There will be there'll be zone reads for Evers. There will be um, QB powers. That That's more of his game. He's more athletic. So I, I don't think that he'll be out of the offense entirely. It's, it's an interesting thought because I, I don't know if Longo wants to take the time to design packages just kind of for an athletic quarterback. I think he wants to get the ball into his playmakers and wants the quarterback to be the distributor there. Now, but you're right. Evers has great physical tools. Like, again, this is not me rooting against one or the other. I, I think everything I've seen from Locke and read about him, he's going to be ahead in the kind of the, the just the, the intangibles of playing quarterback. Yeah, the, the throwing and stuff like that. Yeah. But that's hard to overcome. It is. It is hard to overcome. And um, I might be alone on this hill, but I think Evers will. You're not. Just, beat, Justin's with you, by the way, on this I hill. think I think Evers will eventually beat out Locke because I think he's a ceiling raiser. I think he's mm-hmm. the type of quarterback that you on your on your team that will make you better. 
And um, not saying that Locke, you know, can't make us better because obviously he can. He's a great quarterback. I just think that Evers has better tools and possesses more ability if he reaches that potential. Yeah, I, I think that's true. His his ceiling is higher. I would definitely agree with you. I don't even know if anybody would disagree with you on that. Um, this is from Grant O'Doherty. Minnesota lost one of their top recruits yesterday after talking trash to Wisconsin. Yeah, you hate to see that. You, you hate to you hate to see Wisconsin, uh, Minnesota lose one of their top recruits. That's a bummer. Um, coming back here, this is from Isaac Zeiss. 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 Again, I apologize if I mispronounce names. As soon as Fickle gets a single five star, we can stop asking the "Is he a better recruiter?" question. Obviously, mm-hmm. Paul Chris and that staff did land Logan Brown, Rucci, both five star players. It, I mean, it, it's both offensive linemen. You know, not that that's not nothing. That those are still really big wins. Let's not. This is not the time where we just minimize what the previous staff did because Fickle's doing great as well. I still think Fickle. Again, go look at year one of Paul Chris compared to year one of Luke Fickle. I think you'll see a difference there. I, I don't think that – I think they're better recruiters at different positions. Mm. Obviously, Chris didn't land a, an Emilio guard. He didn't land a Dylan Jones level type high you know, running back. But I don't think Fickle and his staff will be able to recruit the as good of offensive linemen as Chris did. Because that was their selling point, you know. That that's what they sold on. They want to build their own line. They will run the ball. So I don't know that Fickle and them will be able to get as good of o linemen, but they're definitely way ahead on the on the skill positions. That's that's not something that Chris was ever good at, you know, re- recruiting. Yeah, and quite frankly, they haven't done a great job or a terrible job recruiting offensive line this cycle either. Oh, they, they, they they've done a good job there as well. So. I'm pretty interested with it. Um, Jay Broadbar says offensive linemen are the hardest to rate. Not sure they were actually five stars at the end of the day. And listen, certainly Logan Brown dealt with injuries. That's that that stinks. But I don't think he was. He I think he, even when he played, he didn't look like a five star offensive lineman. Didn't didn't he didn't he punch? Um... So I there something happened. I have more details on that, but I don't think I can. You can't explain. It's fine. Yeah. It's, well, it's fine. Essentially what happened, though, what I can say is he was involved in a, a, a practice skirmish and some other things came out of that that were necess- necessarily released. Like there was a reason he was. I don't, no, no, I'm not. I don't don't read it more into that. Uh, people watching this. He, he was dismissed from the program. Um, he was involved in a practice fight. And I'll, we'll just leave that there. Yeah. But even even when he was on the field, though, he didn't look like he had the feet of a five star. Oh, oh, he didn't. I, I don't I, I don't know what what happened there because his high school film was in, insane but that also goes to a point of what you had with um thomas hollyberger from south dakota mm-hmm. um i don't think he played the best competition he, he, he the people he was running through was, were a lot smaller than him because he was a big high schooler i mean he was massive um so maybe that had a part of it but it, he just didn't look like a five star I, he just didn't yeah i agree with that he, he... He just, it never panned out. Uh, Jeffrey Dementor says, uh, Gideon Atuka, great name, by the way. <laughs> we'll have the most career rushing yards out of the three. You heard it here first. Um, listen, I like, so I like Atuka more. When he committed, I think I was higher on him. I don't want to put words in Justin or Rashid's mouth, but I was definitely higher on him than Justin. Justin, and not that Justin doesn't like him, but I really like Atuka. I think he, he brings something unique to the game. I don't know if he has the gear that the other two have to break the long runs to build up the the rushing yards. That that's a hot take, and the reason why I say that is I don't think that Etuka will ever be the lead back in in in, in the offense. I don't think you're going to see him out there on first and ten from the twenty yard line. I just unless Dupree or Jones gets hurt, mm-hmm. he's more of a goal line back or short yardage. So having Say, I don't. I don't think he'll he'll have the most career rushing yards. I, I think Jones will, because I think out of Jones, Dupree, and him, Jones is is more is the most every down back that out of the three. But I think Jones and Dupree will get a lot more touches than um, Atuka will. Yeah, Ryan Bliss says uh, Atuka gives us a fullback running back hybrid. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I, again, I like different pieces. I like versatility. I, I want to come up here because this is an interesting point. I see this made in other spots. Um, let me find it here. This is from Ryan Bliss. Uh, Rudy recruited the offensive line, not Chris. Ryan uh, Eiler said Joe Rudolph landed them. Uh, but here's the thing, Paul Chris. You know, you got to if we're, if we're giving credit 
to Luke Fickle for the offensive players that we landed because he hired Phil Longo. You have to give credit to Paul Chris for having Rudolph in that position to recruit those offensive linemen. Right? Because like that's if, it's the same if thing. We're going, if we're going by that, then the only real rec- the only recruits that Fickle are getting is cornerbacks and I guess Christ you would say be what quarter? Chris. He said Christ Chris. I said <laughs> Um, he would be what quarterbacks? So that's what he recruited. So, and if you look at Christ, he got. Am I saying it wrong? You did it again it? now? Now it's in your head. <laughs> ah, whatever. He got Graham Mertz. That's I mean, and Graham Mertz out of high school was on rivals. I think the number thirtieth ranked player in the something really insanely it was high. One of the one of the top pro rated pro style quarterbacks in the country. He's a huge win. Yeah, and fickle. You know, it, then you. That's why I said both because i feel like fickle also gives the 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 go-ahead to a lot of his people to go and after people it's not just he doesn't say you go recruit them you go recruit them he the people come back to him he's like yeah i like that we'll do that so that's why i gave both of them wins there yeah i think it's like i'm a navy guy like people know that in my history like the captain gets the credit and the blame of a ship like if you have a really good lieutenant um the captain's gonna get the credit for that and if you're if you if you're asleep in your bunk at night and you have a lieutenant that runs into a freighter, the captain gets the blame for that too. So I give Paul Chris credit for having Joe Rudolph in that role to recruit those players, just like I give Luke Fickle credit for hiring Phil Longo um, to get the, right. these quarterbacks and receivers. I about this comment? Are, about yeah. this comment? Um, let's let's read it first. Because some people listen on okay. podcast. Yeah. Uh, John Berger says, it's not true that PC didn't recruit four-star running backs. Uh, he recruited Berger, Braylon Allen, Jonathan Taylor. Also got Chez as a transfer. Um, John, thanks for jumping in as always, man. John, that's a great point. Uh, but Braylon wasn't he didn't he, he he came out as a safety and they eventually moved him over to running back. So I mean I get he, he technically is a four star running back, is what you could say, but he was originally as a four star um safety. That's what he came in as, and that's what he was originally gonna play until they moved him. And Jordan Runge uh, says that as well. Burger didn't work hard, Allen was a safety. Um I think we'll wrap about wrap up there. We're at 36 minutes. I never want to try to take too much of anybody's time really really fun show guys thank you everybody for tuning in uh go fickle yourself said colin hitchler uh is a recruiting menace on the east coast that is very true that especially the pennsylvania area he's been absolutely awesome rio c allen came in as a linebacker um uh, mike a couple of just rapid fire questions here is, does deck get early playing time this year i think he can i don't think tight ends there's no established players at tight end outside of condiff and he's had struggles uh quite frankly being healthy I think it's possible, but I think he's, I think he's the best route. He'll be the best route runner and pass catcher out of that group. So I think if we're, we're chasing points, let's say we're down a little bit and we have some passing that he'll, he'll definitely be in there instead of a, a Cundiff or a, a Rushing. Yep. All right, guys, with that, uh, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you for jumping in on an impromptu uh, Badgers, bad lockdown Badgers uh, reaction show. Uh, I don't think we have anyone else coming in, in the next couple of days, but if so, we'll be here. If not, you know, we're going to talk to you probably again. Oh, Coming up tomorrow, actually, I do have an interview with a two, um, 2024 commit. So you guys are going to want to stick around for that. Lots of content. It's coming up. We'll talk to you later on Wisconsin. Let's go.